Good morning, everyone. This is the Futures in Five. I'm Emery, and we're taking a look at the ES. Today is Yom Kippur, and so we probably will have a little bit of light volume action today looking at the support zones. I talked about 2907 yesterday, and it took really until this morning to get there. It did bounce, lose the level, and then bounce, and now we are sort of struggling around this region. If we do lose this 2907, 2906 area again, we should drift right back down. It's 2902, 2901. We want to watch these edges. If we can get up over 2912, it'll be in good shape for an upside formation. Overall, the price action is still relatively bullish, though light volume today might give it a little more bullish press than we might normally see, or we might have news that would come in and give us a tough time and give us back right down into our prior congestion areas, still at around 2095. Watch that edge at the support zone that's been defined already today. That should give you the pivot into upside or downside as the day continues. Taking a look at the NQ, this one bounced really sharply. We did expect it to bounce, and so that was, of course, a great thing for it to do. It came into the 2557 area. That's the level that I had drawn yesterday. Today, it squeezed up a little bit more to 7561. We are below the 7529 area currently, and that is... Uh, a space that suggests that we could come in to 2506, which we already have, but the bounce event from that area is going to be the tell-all. If we can hold and get up above 20, uh, excuse me, 7530, golly, I hope I haven't been saying 25 the whole time. We do know it's 75. Up above this 7530 area, we are going to see more bullish action take hold, but because of this flat formation right here, it is going to be choppy, so don't chase the breakouts in this formation today. Watch your support edges. Just like yesterday, it supports resistance, resistance to support kind of mechanic with the 2074.97 area as the support action event that's the forefront of things and then below at 74.63. Very range bound under our light volume action that we anticipate today. Taking a look at the YM, this is in a bullish formation. It's in a breakout. For those of you that follow me a lot, you know that I had a target zone up here above 26,320, 26,318, something like that. I can't quite, quite, quite remember the exact number, but it was up here. This did hit the target, and then it immediately stopped advancing forward. Does that mean that we have a complete reversal here? No, it does not when we've got target upsides, particularly if we have bullish formations that give us these target zones that turn into fades, is it likely that we need a pullback? Yes. Is it going to be a breakdown? Probably not. So what do we want to look for? Well, we want to look for the region around 26,260 to 26,240 to be the first edge of support. If it holds it, great. If not, it means it's going to dip deeper. I suspect it holds 26,150. That region should have a ton of congestion there. We've got upside pressure on our momentum indicators. Everything's holding fairly well. And if we can see old support, excuse me, old resistance turn into new support right here around 26,200, we'll have ourselves another shot to the upside. Who's to say? I just follow the charts. I really don't think about anything else but what are the big traders doing and can I follow along in that space? And it's usually at that support zone. Taking a look at oil, it's very range bound. Today is the EIA report at 1030 Eastern. It could blow us out of these ranges quite easily. So now what we have to do is consider what it's telling us. So we've got a couple of cross currents. It's essentially sideways, but we are making lower highs and higher lows. That's a wedge. Now. A lot of people will say, hey, you know, just look at the general trend and the wedge. It's going to break in the direction of trend. That may or may not be. Here's the thing. If it breaks, it's going to run across this trend line that I'm drawing with my cursor, and it's going to break down below 69. It's been holding 69 for a couple of days, all of yesterday, certainly, and so far today. And if it breaks down, that's going to be the region that it's going to have to fail and then fail to recapture in order to have more downside formation. Here, we just need to get up above 70 because there is probably a little bit more bullish strength than bearish strength at this time. Uh, it remains to be seen, right? Finally, let's take a look at oil, uh, gold. It's very sideways. We have been running in the space that seems to be tracking this little congestion that we've got in the dollar. 
And what we can't seem to get up over is 1212. Now the real breakout area is 1214. And so if we've got this sideways pressure, see how it sits here, if it pops up and then fades, but holds the 1206 area, which was the region I was talking about yesterday, it could very likely break to the north. There are a lot of people thinking about this area in the metals really getting ready to break out. And if they're wrong, it's going to be a massive slide because there's just a ton of price action packing into this region. Right here, it says that our momentum is still very sideways. And so that's what we're going to expect. We're going to expect that we find sellers up here and we find buyers down here. If the higher lows continue, we'll break out nicely. This has been the Futures in 5.